Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Moxie Coaching Podcast. My name is Michelle, and I'll be your host as we explore what coaching is and how it can help you create your best life. If you're anything like me, it's important to you to give back in some way. Maybe it's volunteering in the soup kitchen. Maybe it's donating a million dollars to environmental research. It doesn't really matter. I started coaching and podcasting because I'm just one person who can only do so much alone. And I realized that through coaching and through podcasting, I could help and support those of you who want to do good works and exponentially increase the amount of good that I'm able to do. So if this sounds like you, please be sure to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you soon. Be well. Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Moxie Coaching Podcast. My name's Michelle and I am your host. This week we are recording video as well as audio. So if you have any interest, you can hop on over to YouTube to check out the visual version of me in all of my glory. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I just thought it would be kind of a cool thing to do to be able to see you or have you see me because there are so many times when I show cards and it's just nice to have, you know, sort of a visual and a little bit more of a relationship than you can get just from the audio. So here I am. I don't have any announcements this week other than just to thank you for being here and to let you know how much I appreciate it. I feel like we are slowly building and creating a nice little community here. And that is my goal to create a safe place for you to learn how to use the tarot in a way that is helpful and effective for you. All right. So what are we talking about this week? Well, there's a lot going on in the world and I feel like we need to acknowledge that. As a podcaster, I've noticed that some people who are podcasting really choose not to address what's going on in the world. And that's completely fine. I understand it 100%. There are times when, you know, we just don't want to deal with what's going on overseas or what's going on in politics here in the States or what's going on in our criminal justice system, right? We don't, we just don't want to deal with those things. And that is fine. And for those people who do those podcasts, I am eternally grateful because I listen to those as well. But I have a hard time not addressing those things, not at least acknowledging kind of what's going on in the world. And I think that because the tarot is such a great tool for helping us cope with what's going on in the world, we can tie in sort of current events and the tarot in some ways. And I'm not saying specifics. I do not want to get into the details. But I think we can acknowledge that the energy right now is really, really difficult. And if you are at the least bit empathic, you're having to work really, really hard to sort of maintain your own energetic integrity and not suck up everybody else's stuff. And so, you know, as we go through difficult times like this, there are cards that we can call on for support. And that is what I wanted to talk about this week. What cards can we look to to support us in sort of disconnecting a little bit from what's going on in the world to 
create or help us to create a buffer. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Because we can't, you know, if we disconnect, we completely disassociate, then we're not really a part of the solution. So we have to stay engaged on some level. <clears throat> but how do we do that in a way that is helpful for the general energy, helpful for, you know, the collective without without being sucked down into the mire that is all of this really negative, difficult, sticky energy out there right now. The two cards that I wanted to talk about today are, there we go, can we get it? The Eight of Cups and the Four of Swords. Oops, I can see now that I'm getting too close. There we go. And it's backwards here. What the heck? I switch it. There we go. Four of Swords. Wow. There we go. And Eight of Cups. Okay. All right. So I chose these cards because they both give us permission in different ways to deal with difficult things in a healthy way. And they both call on us to walk away a little bit from what's going on, to, to separate ourselves from the fray. <laughs> it's difficult to stay informed. It's difficult to it's difficult to stay engaged in everything that's going on when everything is so difficult. And then when we add to that all of the overwhelm that we have a tendency to really foist upon ourselves because we can't get away from our devices, we kind of create a recipe for anxiety attacks. So look at it this way. I did a little bit of a personal study on how much time I spend engaged in something outside of myself, how much time I spend engaged in something that is a distraction in some way, right? How much screen time do I have? A crap load of screen time, Hello! you know, lots of this with what I do, my coaching calls, our on screen, social media, all of the content development, all of that stuff is online. I'm on my phone constantly. I am constantly being barraged with EMFs from usually more than one device, right? As I sit here in my office right now, I've got cell phone laptop, cell phone, desktop, printer. I think that's it for all of the big things. But all of these things put off electromagnetic waves. And those electromagnetic waves can create this sense in us of like a subtle anxiety. And you would be surprised at how, how the energy changes in the space when you put the little stickers on here, and I am majorly digressing here, but they have these little stickers that you can buy on Amazon or wherever, and they block the EMF waves. So those are wonderful. However, they're not perfect. And even if we were able to get rid of all of that electromagnetic interference, we still have this. We still have the hamster wheel of doom. We still have the what if worst case scenario in Ukraine? What if worst case scenario here in the States? What if, what if, what if, what if? And by keeping ourselves in this hyper alert state, we are really damaging our health. And 
physical health and our mental health. And so we need to figure out a way to move past it in a way that is healthy, in a way that doesn't fully disassociate because that's really easy to do. I mean, who hasn't spent, you know, an hour doom scrolling or who hasn't spent an hour watching puppy videos on TikTok because they just can't flip and handle what's going on in the real world at this moment. So they're just going to completely disassociate and focus on something that is if not positive, at least neutral. And so I personally have, oh, I, I'm trying to articulate this. The reason I wanted to do this particular episode is because I have been experiencing, experiencing these things. I have been struggling lately to stay informed without internalizing everything to the point where I'm incredibly stressed out and anxiety ridden. You know, it's, it's just the way it is. And if you are an empath or empathic in any way, or even just a simple empathetic person, there's a lot going on that we need to deal with. So the cards that I chose are both cards that are super supportive for what we're trying to do. And the eight of cups, there we go. The Eight of Cups is a card of choosing intentionally to get things in order and then step away. It's a card that, it's almost like the proactive mental health card. <laughs> so, you know, the person in this card is acknowledging that they have things that they need to deal with, right? All of these things in the cups are things that are daily obligations, daily challenges, whatever. You know, there's work, there's family, there's finances, there's hobby, there's friends, whatever is in these cups. And this person is saying, okay, I'm going to take care of these cups because I'm a responsible person. And... I'm going to set them up in a way that I can walk away for a little while, that I can take some time for myself to really explore what I need, how best to get what I need, and recharge my own batteries, right? Because if you haven't heard this before, you probably have, but I'm going to remind you that whole thing about putting your own oxygen mask on first is a real thing. If we don't, then we just get sucked down into the mire. We have got to maintain our own energetic integrity and find a place to pull that positive energy from to refill our cups so we can get out there, help others, share with others, just be a like nice human being. You know, we all, we all have to have that. So this card is, like I said, it's just reminding you, yeah, it is okay for you to take some time to step away. And whether it's going on a hike like this person, you know, whatever it is, nobody can determine for you what is healthy for you to do when you step away, meaning for me, stepping away might be taking a hike or doing some pottery. For someone else, stepping away could be going and running 10 miles and then eating pizza afterwards. You know, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is that allows you that emotional space that where you can get out from under this intensity and this feeling that we have a tendency to get, to notice, right, you know, in our solar plexus. And it's sort of just this rockish energy that sits there in a very uncomfortable way. So, so yeah, so that's the eight of cups. Now, the other one is, there we are. 
Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is the card that I think would potentially come up just following the pilgrimage or the time away that the person in the Eight of Cups spent, right? This person's like, okay, I'm going to get my ducks in a row. I'm going to organize everything, and then I'm taking some time for myself. Well, now this person has taken some time for themselves, and they have figured out, you know, they've kind of been able to listen to themselves and get a better grip on maybe what they want or their direction, or maybe they've just been able to allow some of that frenetic energy to dissipate. And they're finishing up and they're resting. And they are getting ready to re-enter the fray. They're getting really ready to re-enter, <coughs> excuse me, getting ready to re-enter society. And the, the message behind the Four of Swords is to rest, rejuvenate, heal. And in this, you know, in this case, it's a little dramatic before you go back into battle. Now, I am not saying that, you know, functioning in the real world is a battle, but yeah, sometimes it is. Sometimes it feels like you just have to take a freaking deep breath, pull your mask down, get your shield ready and go. And so this card is saying, okay, you know, you've had your time to rest. You've had your time to rejuvenate. Now let all of that, let all of those nutrients sink into your body. Really, what do we want to say? Absorb them. Really integrate them. Really feel them. And prepare for re-entry and you know do whatever it is that you need to do whether you need to sit and meditate a little longer whether you need to everybody does it differently maybe you need to pray maybe you need to whatever but either way this card is just basically suggesting yes it's time to re-enter yes you need to rest and rejuvenate so let's take just a minute to do that before you need to step back into the fray. So I think that these cards are good reminders. I don't see any devices in either of these cards. <laughs> you know, to, to give yourself a break, to let yourself be a little bit less informed this week or let yourself, give yourself permission to to feel the feelings that you're feeling acknowledge the feelings that you're feeling and <clears throat> and then give yourself permission to figure out what you can do to work through them really is kind of where i'm coming from you know the tarot is here to support us if we just allow it to right so what i might suggest is that if you have any interest at all, meditate on these cards. Spend some time thinking about how these two cards can help you if you're in this mode. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're just like super lucky and super chill and you're doing great. But if you're not, give yourself permission to meditate on these cards a little bit, to think about, okay, you know, what do I need to do? What's, what's my equivalent for these things? And how do I need to go about setting those steps into motion so that I can show up again and <clears throat> be the person that I want to be because I've given myself the chance to rest and to rejuvenate <clears throat> and to, to feel, <laughs> to feel in a way that does it hurt, right? To, to feel, to open yourself up to feeling, you know, more of just the positive in what's going on. So I hope that this makes sense. I hope 
that this was helpful for you. I often will pull a card just to, you know, randomly see what the universe wants me to know and then spend a few minutes meditating on that card, thinking about why did this card come up for me? Why are these cards coming up for us right now? Well, take a look at that for yourself. All right. That's it. I don't think, like I said, there were any announcements. Please, if you have any interest in entering the drawing for a free reading, please do so. It's over on the website. You can hop on over and everyone who is on the website, or I'm sorry, everyone who is on the list now will be on the list for perpetuity for as long as we do this. So you only have to sign up once. You don't have to keep going back. Yeah. And I keep my fingers crossed for you because it should be fun. All right. Have a fantastic week. I will talk to you and potentially see you soon. Bye-bye.